and welcome to episode 42 of GameSpot After Dark, GameSpot's official video game podcast. I'm your host, Jake Decker, and joining me this week is Lucy James. Hello. Callie Plaguey. Hi. And Tamor Hussein. Hello there. How are y'all doing? Good. You know. Let me out. Let me out. We've had a fair share of technical difficulties getting this going, but we are here and we are now going. Oh <laughs> yeah. It's been it's been a, like a week of tech difficulties. But you know what? I'm just thankful that I oh don't know, it's fixable. It's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. If we if something. Well, I mean, it might, we might be. be close to the mm-hmm. end of the world, but you butterfly, know. butterfly effect. Rip. Anyway, you that's a way know. to start a podcast. Sorry. <laughs> wow, <laughs> the absolute down. Down, down. I, mean, I was the one who brought it down by talking about the <laughs> saying that we are we might be close to the end of the world. <laughs> but Good anyway, job, anyway, let's talk about video games. Hey, uh, Kelly, how's that stamp rally going? It's going. Um, I've seen a lot of people talking about how the stamp rally is boring and stupid in Animal Crossing. We should clarify yeah, I was going to say we should Animal clarify. Crossing. Animal Crossing stamp rally started Monday, correct? <laughs> um, yes, for International Museum Day. And like with the other events in New Horizons, they span more than just the day. Um, I like the stamp rally. Like, like it's definitely for kids, right? It's, it's not like a super involved event. I thought May Day was really clever because May Day was like a puzzle that you could solve. The stamp rally for International Museum Day is just going through the exhibits and collecting stamps, but it is very Japanese. It reminds me so much of doing touristy things in Japan. And like I tweeted that um, like when I was in Japan last year at the Tokyo Sky Tree, there was this like special Barbie exhibit and Ooh. there were stamps. There was like a stamp thing and stamp stations for the Barbie exhibit. We've lost Tam. No, we're good. We'll... He's, he's joining oh, back the... <laughs> Just keep going if that happens. <laughs> I think it's Discord, not m- anything on my end. Like, it just froze for a sec. Mm. Um, but yeah, so I, I thought it was like a cute way to celebrate International Museum Day and get you to go through your museum if you hadn't in a while. And I had it, and I was able to go through and be like, okay, there's two fossils I'm missing. Oh, I didn't realize I'd put fish in that tank. I Like, the last time I was in here, there were no fish in that tank. Um... So, I I thought it was a cute, cute I, little event. I mean, not every event has to be Bunny Day where it takes over your whole life. So, yeah, I want to check it out. I haven't done it yet. Uh, I've been hard at work playing other things currently, um, mm-hmm. but it seems it seems neat. Like it seems like a a fun little thing to do, especially like I feel like people are still playing Animal Crossing anyway, and it seems just like a nice diversion to Mm -hmm. head in there, check things out, maybe learn a thing or two. Learning? In my video games? No, I feel bad because I guess the other tweets about it, but I've fully fallen off Animal Crossing now. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's because I'm spending so much time playing Persona. It's like you get one game to donate all my time to. I'm not very good at going between two, but I like the... I'm still people are making incredible things in it and bringing it and I enjoy seeing them on my timeline and videos and stuff but like I didn't even know museum day was going on because I've mm-hmm. just been I'm just out of it now yeah, yeah I, mean, I feel like museum day probably isn't enough to bring people back in mm-hmm. um and to be honest like I'm kind of like you right now I'm playing a JRPG so I don't really have time to play Animal Crossing but I I'm kind of waiting for the next big update I guess yeah. Yeah, I mean the prizes aren't super exciting, but the the nice thing is you can get multiple because the stamp stations change every day. So like I could collect multiple and like give them to friends who weren't playing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I don't know. I I played New Leaf every day for like a year and a half and I played I played Wild World every day for at least 2 years. Mm-hmm. So, I really like Animal Crossing. It is part of my <laughs> lifestyle. Yeah. So I will just continue. I will continue to play Animal Crossing every single day and check the store and check my turn of prices and do all of that stuff. And it, it is hard because there are other games that I not just want to play but need to play. So, but I, you know, I'm putting a lot of time into terraforming now. So that's my thing. How about you, Tamor? Sounds like you're doing some exercise. 
Yeah, I was kind of like, I put Ring Fit in there, but I just want to say that game is ingenious. Like it's, every time I play, I'm like, this is a unbelievable application of gaming into exercise. It's so good. It's the best they've any, I think anyone has ever melded those two things together. Um, so I played a bit of that. Um, I downloaded AC Origins because Jordan from our editorial team tweeted that you could get some DLC, the uh, Curse of the Pharaoh's Tomb or something like that. And it basically makes you makes your hidden blade and headshots with arrows one hit kills, which is how I prefer to play. Like I like the old hidden blade mm-hmm. where you'd insta kill. So I was like, all right, I'm going to do that. Um, so, but I haven't actually started doing that. Honestly, I'm mostly playing Persona. Like, I'm playing. I'm 55 hours, 60 hours into it now. Um, uh, that's my main thing that I'm currently playing, and I'm really loving it. But I also kind of want to get through it so I can start my Yakuza replay, which I'm very excited for. I started like dipping into Yakuza Zero from the middle again. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to start all over again and do the entire series. Um, so that's my plan. And I'm watching Jake play Bloodborne. Jake and Matt Paget. That's my main form of gaming now. Yeah, mostly Matt playing. Uh, but I've yeah. been playing alongside him uh, just to see what's ahead of him. But he he's about to face off against the final boss. But I, I guess I'll just transition what I've been doing. But I finally did uh, Old Hunters DLC, which I got right when it came out. Uh, I played Bloodborne a ton when it came out, which I think I've said on the podcast. But for some reason, I just never went back for Old Hunters. Finally did it. And man, am I mad at myself! I waited this long because it oh, is yeah. good. Some of the, I think, some of my favorite bosses in the game are in that DLC. The only one I don't like, which I don't think is surprising, like I don't really think you're supposed to like the boss named the Living Failures, uh, which is a great name. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but like all of them were so good. Uh, I, I was super stoked because I beat the final boss. Uh, I almost beat him my first try, the Orphan of Koss. Yeah, uh, which I, I mean, that was kind of a fluke because I almost beat my first try, and then he kicked my ass a couple times. But man, I, those I think that's generally how it's supposed to go. Like I, my first time with Orphan of Course, I almost beat him. I was like, oh, and then just he turns yeah. on, <laughs> it turns on, and it's like, oh, okay, you were just l- lulling me into a false sense of security. But it's that that is probably well. I don't want to. I don't want to say who the middle. How far are you into it, Lucy? Um. God, I haven't played it in over two months. What was it? Was the last boss you fought? I think it was Ludwig. Beat Ludwig. Okay, the boss after that, which I won't ruin, in in the in the it, tower. It, oh, I, I know who it is. In the oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like the Lady Maria. Yeah, Lady Maria. Yeah, okay. Lady Maria. Yeah. The Lady Maria boss fight is like one of my favorites in that whole game, um, and it's basically the foundation for Sekiro. Like that yeah. entire game is that was them figuring out Sekiro in that DLC. I um, definitely got that impression fighting her. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is this yeah. is a Sekiro boss. Like, I need to get ready to to block and counter. Um, yeah. So but obviously, you're I'm, just dodging. That's what I love about From Software games. Like, if you pay attention to the game that you're playing made by them, you can probably find the seed of the next game in there. Um, and for me, the one that I think that has been the seed for the next game coming is uh, Castle Kanehurst and... Um, Elden Ring I think those two are going to be connected where it's this Mm. far off you know um, area that you go into that feels completely different from the rest of the game and is almost like stylistically distinct I think that's going to be what Elden Ring is where you're just going from kingdom to kingdom and getting these mythical artifacts to do this one thing but everyone's just going to feel different like one will feel like Sekiro one will feel like Dark Souls one will feel like Bloodborne um yeah. yeah, I wonder if, not to get too off topic here, but I wonder if they'll kind of incorporate the play styles of Dark Souls, Sekiro, and Bloodborne into like building your class. Because like Dark Souls definitely leaned pretty heavy into what kind of class you want to do, and even Bloodborne did that to some extent. But then Sekiro was very much like, this is how you're going to play yeah. this game. But I'm curious if Elden Ring will kind of embrace these different styles in terms of what class you decide to play, if that's even a thing, or if they're just going to go down like this is how you should be playing this game, which I don't think yeah. based on that teaser and the rumors. What is like, what's the, what was the big rumor from last year about the horses? It's going to be horses. Oh yeah. Yeah. You're going to be like riding horses. I know about Elden Ring. I'd love to ride around that world on Ludwig, the horse. <laughs> or, um, I... 
for the... I've been really wanting to, to finish Sekiro. I want to go back to it. Yes, you what should you do it. What did you get up to? Um, the last thing I did was Blazing Bull, and I had a bad time. And Blazing Bull is rough. It was yeah. really rough. But I've been, I've been watching this... Uh, it's not Japanese, but I've been watching a Korean show on Netflix, and... It's a it's the same around the same time period as Sekiro is when it's set. So I've been, um, I, I've been What's itching to play like a historical game. Uh, it's called Kingdom, and it's like a oh. Korean Korean take on a Western zombie fiction. Ooh. But I don't really like the zombie stuff. They're kind of like fast zombies, and I'm kind of like man fast zombies. They're yeah. like 28 Days Later zombies. But um, the political intrigue in the Joseon era korea was is really interesting so what are you watching it on where is it it's on netflix, on netflix. oh because i remember starting it but that was in the uk so i don't know if it was mm. still higher. yeah so did you, yeah i was gonna say did you ever watch empresses in the palace a chinese <laughs> historical drama no, that no, took no, over for like to. a month me sarah who used to work in our uk office and i became obsessed with empresses in the palace because it's basically just like historical bitches love that i'm very into uh, mm-hmm. But I never finished it because it, but like, it was very good for a while. It was all about concubines and, you know. Speaking of historical bitches and concubines, you should definitely watch The Handmaiden. I have. I saw oh, it's that. it's so good. So I saw that um, in the UK. They do a thing called Secret Cinema where you basically, it's an interactive theatre thing and there are loads of um, actors and actresses. And for The Handmaiden one, you have to dress up and it's all themed all the guests, you're not allowed to speak. Mm-hmm. So you you sat down and had dinner together and everyone just had to bring a pad of paper and was just completely silent. Then they show the film and then they reenact some of the scenes and they reenacted some of the scenes. I saw some nude people on that stage. It's very good. Anyway, that, that movie's really good, but I know exactly the scene you're talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. Which I did not expect to see. It was very good. Anyway, also, that I've, was the I've, foreign cinema <laughs> break. I mean, if you want to segue into what I've been doing, it actually kind of flows very well. I've been watching mm. Historical Bitches. I've been watching The Great. On <laughs> My mom wanted to watch that. Should it's we watch so it? good. Yes. Did you watch The Favourite? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's, it's, one of the, it's the guy who co-wrote The Favourite. And it's all about Catherine the Great. Is there less who, vomit in, in the show than in The Favourite? Episode four, you're not going to have a good time. Okay. There's vomit in episode four. I'm just picturing like uh, people from that era, but it's that scene from uh, Family Guy where everyone drinks that. Oh, the epi- um, epicat? Yeah, epicat. And there's just vomiting, but it's all like people dressed in royal it's, outfits. It's not that of. bad. That's what the favorite felt like to me. I still liked it, it though. Um, It's very, very good. Very funny. Nicholas Holt, it plays Peter, the Emperor, and Elle Fanny. Nicholas Holt of that zombie movie fame? Oh my god, I forgot he was in that one. He was in one I was going to say from about... Hank McCoy. Boy, Hank McCoy. Um, and Elle Fanning plays Catherine. Um, she's incredible. And then I made myself sad because she's only 22. And I was like, how is she this... Like, she's so good in it. Her comedic timing is perfect, but she also has the poise and grace of sort of, like, an aristocrat. And I was like, oh my god, she's 22. Her skin is also unbelievable. Um, But yeah, it's very funny. And it's like, even though it's set in Russia, it's really British. Like, they throw the C word around all the time, which is a Brit, Ooh. I appreciate. Concubine. That's very fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what's it on? Hulu. Hulu. So it's Hulu over here. I don't know if or how the UK is going to get it. Probably um, iPlayer. Maybe. I hope so. It's really good. I've been devouring it. Um, and I very much recommend that you watch it. Avatar The Last Airbender is now on Netflix. Yes! It's essential the- viewing for if you are a human on Earth, you need to watch that show. The best huh. TV show ever made. I love it so much. Do you want to tell them about our unfortunate Slack conversation about avatar oh my god <laughs> i think you should tell him because you're the problem with it i'm the problem uh term message me the other day oh, very like, earnestly like yeah. you know when you really want to rec- you know when you know someone's going to love something and you just what you want them to like to just receive your earnest recommendation properly because you're like i know this person 
I know for a fact that they're going to watch this and they're going to, it's going to change their life and they're going to love it. So I, I sent Lucy a message and that's where the story begins. I'm trying to find it. I want to see it if it is as bad as I remember because I, I just like completely shat on your dreams. Yeah. Uh, more <laughs> from tomorrow. I'm looking through but, Slack. But, but yeah, it is. Oh, here, it is. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Avatar came out on Netflix today. You should check it out. <laughs> My immediate response was, shite, mate. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he said, this is a quiet, humble plea. And then I went, oh, the anime. I thought you meant the 2009 James Cameron. <laughs> you probably murdered Tamor by calling it an anime, by the way. Oh, Tamor, was like... Tamor literally said, Christ, my heart, it broke. <laughs> it's true. It's but true. that's that's how my mum replies to things. Shite. Shite pet. <laughs> Sing it. Shite pet. Shite pet. And I accidentally did it here and I felt so bad. Anyway, Avatar's on Netflix. It is. It's it's a perfect show. I don't say that. Absolutely about, perfect. No, not even a perfect it's a perfect thing. Like perfect it's, creation it's on a earth. Perfect creation. A better thing could not have been created. And like um, the the thing about it that I always say to people who haven't watched it is like the first season you're you're gonna feel like a little more Nickelodeon, like there's a little more kid stuff in it. But God, I like I, and a show that ends so beautifully too. It's one of the few endings that I finished, and I was like, that was perfect. It couldn't have been it's, any better. Like, it's Legend of Korra by the Avatar people. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a follow-up. I didn't, I didn't like the good. first season of Korra, but I think it's because I was so attached to Avatar that I just... Yeah. It starts off... Good. I watched Avatar. I don't remember a lot of it. I should probably watch it again now that it's on oh Netflix. God, but I did meet so uh, the voice actor for Zuko, and I had no idea. It did not yeah. click until much later. Uh, it's like, through, through someone who helps out during E3, she was having a movie showing. Uh, and I went to I, I went to go see it, and he was there, and I started talking to him, and he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm Dante, is Dante Bosco," and and I didn't even click because he, he was the producer on her film, and you then met Dante Bosco, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, and then I and then I left, and Michael started talking about him, and I was like, "Then why does that name sound familiar?" I'm like, "Oh, I met him, that's why," and then I looked it up, and I was like. Oh, uh, so it's probably good that I didn't know who he was because then it would have been like, oh my God, I've seen this. But instead it was just like, hey, how you doing? And I think I had like drank some whiskey with him or something like that and then just moved on. I like that show because it's not anime though. Shite, mate. Shite, mate. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, should we start, uh, should we move on to the topics mm-hmm. for this week? Yeah, all right. All right. Call of Duty, Black Ops, Cold War. Shite, mate. Yeah, Sorry, that's... I just really wanted to say it. Uh, oh, Tam's gone. That's how, <laughs> He'll come that's back. That's how much he feels about Koji. So what, it's leaked that that's the locale? I guess. Mm-hmm. This is if what only Tam our... would really... I if know. Only our <laughs> news editor would <laughs> news on editor the line. Here to help us. <laughs> I mean, so let's just, while we're waiting for Tam to come back, on the surface, the title, Black Ops Cold War, like, to me, I'm like, the point of the Cold War is that there weren't like are we doing are we doing espionage? Are we doing stealth? Mm-hmm. Like what I yeah, I imagine I it'll know. be because Black Ops won, a lot of that took place like in and around the Cold War. So I imagine it'll be something similar. Yeah. But I, like I'm curious if it's gonna be like a full on reboot, sort of like modern warfare. But then why would you yeah. feel the need to call it Cold War? I don't know. It, yeah. it's strange. Um, it's really strange. By the way, Tay just put in video Slack, is Discord down? Oh, so. cool. <laughs> well. Dunno. You're, uh, we're still you're also being like, uh, yeah, you're being Tam. cut in half on the video. Really? Tam yeah, says Discord like right is in down in, reg- in After Dark Slack. Holy cow. What an interesting episode. Should we keep going? <laughs> Yeah. Let, let's let's <laughs> okay. keep going. This Hold is on. just one of many technical difficulties. Seriously. Uh, let me just message Tam and be like, well, rejoin if you can. Keep, keep, <laughs> keep talking about something. I'm going to recenter your camera, Lucy. Okay. Oh, no, you are just cut in half. We're going to oh. leave it as is. <laughs> Look. Because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to fix it I on the fly. Fine. Everyone looks fine. Well, 
No, uh, I, I can fix it on the fly. I can do this. I can do this. <laughs> so, um, Black Ops. <laughs> I actually played a lot of Black Ops 3's multiplayer for some reason. Why I still three? don't know why. It was uh, just I would come home and play like a couple matches every night. <laughs> so, I mean, one was my big one because uh, I was at yeah. uni and also unemployed and also had three contact hours at university a week. So I very, very quickly prestiged in Black Ops multiplayer. <laughs> I'm, sh- I'm sure we crossed paths in Black Ops because I played a lot of Black Ops too. Yeah. Black Ops 1, 2. Yeah. Not 2. Didn't play 1, two. Wow. comma 2. Yeah. Well, also, I guess now we've got Call of Duty, colon, Black Ops, colon, Cold War. I don't know if there's a second colon. I just put it in there to make a Too joke funny. about. Yeah. I don't know. It's not games, that funny. But. Games with, with all those fancy sub titles, subheaders are the you bane of my Kingdom existence. You can say Kingdom Hearts. It's fine. <laughs> no, I was thinking of SpongeBob SquarePants, Battle for Bikini Bottom, uh, oh. rehydrated or whatever because the full hold on I'm gonna get the full title of the game because it's really complicated and it pisses me off it makes my life hard Spongebob Squarepants colon battle for bikini bottom hyphen rehydrated what was the Harry Potter one was it it was like Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows part one the official video game or something and it was something a very like similar that. situation where it was like there's too much grammar in this. And then, like, for my, he- like, the way headlines work is only so many words, like, so many characters in the headline actually make it into the URL. And so, like, you get funky URLs when game names are that long and it makes things difficult. I did and see the engineers rolled out an update about that today, though. I did in their see weekly, that. their weekly wins email. And I was like, oh, it's good. Yeah. I was like, good for you guys. Because I didn't even know that was an issue. But I'm glad it's fixed. Um, that's the best kind of issue one that you don't know is an issue until it's already fixed and you're like oh. you're like wow you're brilliant you both spotted and fixed the problem before i even knew it was there so, so before yeah. we just to bring it back to to black ops cold war I, I don't know do you guys have any like hopes for it do you want it to be like a kind of like what they did with modern warfare uh for black ops or do we want something completely different like i don't know i'm I mean, honestly, Black Ops in that new engine, yeah, I can see yeah. it. I'd be into it. Like, I think Black Ops storyline wise was probably my favorite. Just in yeah, terms, totally. like, it, it was a re- really weird mashup. Um, I think the storyline in that game was great. Also, was that the one that Trent and Atticus did the score for? I feel like I it think is. so. I th- either that one or two is what they yeah. did the one score for. It's but that one fun. has. A bunch of, or that that original one had a bunch of like top build actors, right? Like uh, Sam Worthington. Well, Sam Worthington, who I don't know what he's doing anymore, but uh, Gary Oldman Avatar was too. in it, right? Avatar Did, 2, yeah. Have you seen the video of Gary Oldman on a talk show and he's on there to talk about Call of Duty? No. And, and think, he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I think he gets his character name wrong. It's like that kind of stuff. You're like, oh, mate. Um, but let's rain fire. That's my best. <laughs> You know, do you ever have those little kind of, um, like a soundboard in your mind? Yes. Like, on vines, TikToks. One of mine, for example, in the morning is I go get my coffee, and every time I come back into my room, I go, meeting time, but it's the exact cadence of the woman in Futurama who feeds little heads in the head museum, mm-hmm. and she goes, feeding time. So yeah. that's the kind of shit that I'm working with. But rain <laughs> fire... <laughs> It's one that is always in my head. Always in my head. I just always have this little thing of Gary Oldman screaming rain fire in my head. 2020. Huh? I am so glad you, you put that into words, though, because I have so many of those. And, like, we have, like, family ones. Like, my like my family will do them. And I'm like, no one else knows what the hell we're saying. Yep. My family uh, has their own little like um like weird things that they call things. Like a like car park is a, Yeah. Park arc. Like my, my stepmom is called Judy, but for oh. some reason we call her Judy Bugs. I have no idea where bugs came from. We've just done it for almost thirty years. It's very cute. 
Yeah. My a big thing in my family is from Chicken Run when one of the chickens says, "Are those the only choices?" Um, whenever we're presented with two kind of shit options for something, we all go, mm-hmm. "Are those the only choices?" So don't want to, be you know, high. you just never know. But anyway, I was definitely more of a modern warfare person than a Black Ops person. I I just was at a weird time in my life with Black Ops Three, I guess. But like, um. I, I'm kind of burnt out on Call of Duty, honestly. Mm-hmm. I wish that Call of Duty would fully commit to the things that it's trying to do. Like, I even felt that way in Black Ops 3. Like, that storyline is almost about PTSD, and then, like, it it just becomes, like, surreal and weird. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, like, you all, like, you almost got there. Um, you almost did it. And I think, like... There, there is a large population of Call of Duty players that are veterans, and I think that that's something that, that would be good to address in a Call yeah. of Duty game. Um, if, like, you're there for the story. So, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm curious. I, I do like... Yeah, I wonder if veterans would even want it to go that in depth, though, you know? Because I feel like a lot of veterans just play multi- you know I, I don't want to generalize but I, i'd imagine maybe you wouldn't want it to be too vivid but then it's weird because modern warfare was like we're gonna be super realistic yeah modern warfare has like kinda- ha- i i think like the more i mean even for like the sound design is way more realistic yeah so yeah. i i don't know I don't know. I just know that my, my, to be fully, like, I'm just going to lay it out there. My therapist works with veterans a lot and she will, she's talked about like how, like all of her veteran patients play Call of Duty. Oh, really? Yeah. Cause it's like, she'll ask me about what I do for work and stuff. And I'm yeah. like, video, you know, like Pokemon, call it, call of duty. Like, you know, big video games. She was like, oh yeah. All of my veteran clients. I wonder, I wonder, I mean, I wonder if it's a kind of exposure therapy in a way. Maybe. My, my dad used to be in a clan, like, back in the probably, like, MW3 era uh, that was just, like, all Marines and then my dad. I don't know how that happened, <laughs> but... Um, That's Xbox Live for you. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I think... I don't know. I really... I feel strongly about the original Modern Warfare. Like, I, I think that, like, really pushed games of that genre in a way that they hadn't been pushed before. Um, I love the original Modern Warfare, even for all its, like, quirks. Um, And I would love to see Call of Duty, like, stick to something a little bit better, maybe. Mm. Yeah, one interesting thing. uh, So, Ray Civic, I don't know if you guys have heard of him, but he's a YouTuber. He did a video about Call of Duty. Uh, It's really good. I highly recommend it. Um, but he did a video where he basically went through all of the Call of Duty games and figured out like what is the gimmick this game and like if you look at them they have this very interesting like kind of predictable strategy where they will do something to death until people hate it and they want something else and then they'll switch it up and they'll be like look see you were listening this is like this cool new thing that people have been wanting and then they'll do that to death until people will get mad and then they'll go back to the old thing and pretend like it's new so like an example of that right would be infinite warfare was the one where oh, yeah. people were like really mad and we're like we're tired of this we don't want futuristic so then they went back to world war ii and they were like look see boots on the ground like that's what people want in call of duty and i'm willing to bet like We're going to have a couple more Call of Duty games and then people are going to be like, all right, well now like I want to see like Call of Duty in future or I want Mm -hmm. and and it's just like this cycle that doesn't really end of just like just like right right when a mechanic or key system is everyone's tired of it, they'll retire it and they'll just leave it on the shelf and wait until it's time to bring it back. Yeah, I mean, maybe I'm asking too much of Call of Duty because Call of Duty is really like an entertainment product, not like it's not trying to be a statement. I mean, it is kind of like a, like, I don't know if you guys have that article about the, the U S army recruiting people through call of duty tournaments. Um, so there's yeah. that. I, I mean, aspect. I always find it weird when they're at, um, like E3 and gamescom, the army yeah, is always the there army. in force. Yeah. So there's that aspect of call of duty, which like we don't have to get into. Um, but like, I think 
the reason I bring up like I wish Call of Duty would stick to that the statement is because I think they get like halfway there. I would also love to see like a really fun loving, like not grit, not super gritty Call of Duty. You know, mm-hmm. also so like like it's not that Call of Duty has to be really hard hitting and talk about PTSD. It's it's just that I think they get like halfway or even three quarters of the way there and then pull back. Um, but but also like Call of Duty is more than just like one person's vision like it is an entertainment monster it is a behemoth yeah. it is th- there's i mean some of this stuff is just pure marketing like like what jake talked about like changing changing the mechanics up that's a marketing tool rather than like a game design tool so i think call of duty is what it is and you kind of I, I felt that way with modern warfare also um I don't want to speak for Tamor, but I know like he and I had different interpretations of that game and there's so much I could have talked about, but it's like, I I can't really, I can't really like dig into like the entire world around Call of Duty uh, when reviewing it. Um, Mm. So my feelings on Call of Duty are super complicated, um, but I am interested to see where they go next. Like I always am. Yeah, I think I've kind of hit the point. Like I, I, I guess I've done a similar thing where I was into Call of Duty and I burnt out, and like I didn't play or get interested into a lot of them, and then I, oh, tomorrow's back. Tom's back. All right, I have Yay. to fix the overlay. <laughs> um, why? Why tomorrow, am I the only one that gets booted out when the server? I don't know. Down? We kept going. We've been going for the past twenty minutes or so. Yeah. Tomorrow, what are your thoughts while I get Discord, the overlay? Discord racist. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Will I get the overlay fixed tomorrow? What are your thoughts on Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War? Whatever in it. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got to say more than that. It's going to take me a while. Um, I'm glad they're going back to Black Ops. They always did interesting story stuff for Black Ops. And so I'm hoping that they do more of that again. Um, and not to say that, that mo- actually, Mono- I was going to say Modern Warfare story. It wasn't good, but like Modern Warfare story has a fair share of issues, but I like the kind of like attempt to do it. I wish, I wish people would just. Uh, this is that's too spicy to say. I'm gonna pull back on that one. Wow! Uh, I I'm literally was back. talking about how the army recruits yeah. people through Call of Duty, so you're probably not gonna be too spicy. I mean, the thing I was gonna say is I'm sick of people d- pussyfooting around controversial and political subject matter, or like twisting it into some sort of new story. If you're gonna tell the story about you know cults in far cry tell the story about cults in far cry if you're going to tell, tell the story, the story about story, war crimes in the middle east don't make tell the story war crimes yeah make own own the shit own the history that you're claiming own the history that you're using as a mocking beat like put Dang. it in your story yeah and i mean like, honestly like that's why i'm kind of a little trepidatious about uh watch dogs legion yeah don't, don't like, ask about brexit yeah, surveillance state. It's 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 yeah. un, it's ridiculous. Like, and and I don't know how we got here, but like Black, Black Ops has always done interesting things with story. Um and if they can do a kind of like the numbers Mason style thing within the Cold War, I'm all for it. But if they're like, oh, we're gonna do a Cold War story that's politically charged and then just do some like half assed, half baked version of a Cold War story, I don't, I'm not interested in that. But they also do like cool things with gameplay and you know, like the kind of like, uh, and they have an interesting, f- I'm excited to see how it feeds into Warzone more than anything. Um, because the, cause the, um, the rumor is that it's going to be announced through Warzone instead of like a major, you know, like a Warzone event. And like, so with what, they're kind like, of doing a Fortnite thing of like, yeah, yeah, let's get a concert yeah. going too. That would make our lives yeah. harder. Party in the gulag. Let's go. <laughs> no. Also, I just want to say that today is my dad's birthday and he took the day off to play Call of Duty. <laughs> <laughs> so much respect for your dad. Yeah. Nothing also, it's also your brother's birthday too. What's he doing? It's also my brother's birthday. He's take, he has a class. What a flex for your dad to have a kid on his birthday. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Both your parents. What a flex. Uh, anyway, we've spent a lot of time talking about Call of Duty, but we should probably move on to the new story that broke, what, earlier this week? Sony is set to announce PS5 game lineup very soon. Uh, that's, good. that's the entire story. Yeah, that's pretty, that's pretty much the entire story, right? Horizon I mean, like, two. Yeah, 
I think the interesting thing is what do you think is going to be there? Horizon yeah. 2. Uh, Bloodborne 2. Don't. Because you're just going to get yourself excited <laughs> yeah, and then it's not going to happen. And you're just going to yeah. make yourself sad. If they, we're going to have to pick did, up pieces. Yeah. <laughs> then it's going to be even more of a wreck than usual. If they do... <laughs> hey, we've, uh, we've updated Bloodborne for PS5. It's the same game. I mean, it's hey, just updated. Yeah. I would absolutely take oh. that. Yeah. I'll have that. 60 frames, yeah. Uh, yeah. decent frame rate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, that Blue Point game should be there. Oh, what do you think it is? Either either the new, like, or the rumor is they're making a new game, but they're mm-hmm. also believed to be working on the Demon Souls remake. So yeah, if they they've do said Demon they're working Souls, on a remaster of a beloved yeah. title. If it's Demon Souls, oh my god, I'm gonna get wet. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> From sweat. We're from really, sweat. What are you talking really about? We're already pushing the boundaries. Of this I'm talking about overheating and stuff. What? <laughs> I mean, I mean, Jell Luke's band name from last week was was a line. Which, that which was you censored further. once, but not yeah, the second which time. Which I forgot to believe the second time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I bet we're gonna see Gran Turismo eight seven. Listen, I'm not being rude, but. It's like the white bread of racing games, isn't it? <laughs> shite like, pet. It's shite, shite pet. pet. I, I haven't played a Gran Turismo since I was a kid, honestly. Like, Well, I feel like Forza kind of just showed him up. Yeah. yeah. Like, if I'm going to play a racing game, I'm going to play Forza. And if yeah. I'm going to play a racing a racing game, hell is probably frozen over because... Uh, not your bad. Yeah, I was going to say, like, I really... That was a joke. I can't speak to Forza or Gran Turismo. I haven't played a racing game that wasn't Mario Kart since like N64. Like a Forza yeah. Horizon. Yeah, know? Forza Horizon is fun to just drive around in. Yeah. I think the Gran Turismo games are really, like people really, really love them and they do a specific thing, but I think more and more as the time goes on, that series feels more and more out of place with the world around it. Like they're just still doing like very straight up simulation track racing with like, here's a Voxel Vectra that you can race and you're like, why? Why would you do that? Like, yeah. and people I love I mean, it. Top Top Gear built a whole TV show about that exact concept. So, yeah, true. Um, and then, like, and then and now look at them. Top Gear showed up in Forza Four, yeah, instead yeah. of <laughs> Grand Turismo. <laughs> and it's just yeah, I I, th- I think I'm one of those people who likes a little more like flavor and spice in their racing games to get me involved. I yeah, I mean, so the same for you guys. I imagine too, if it's going to be a launch title, like this is just speculation, but I imagine. There's going to be a lot of stuff that have been in previous ones that aren't going to be in this, and people are going to be surprised and disappointed by that, uh, even mm-hmm. if they are fans. Because I feel like that, that I mean, that hap- that happens with launch titles normally, especially like racing games. I remember Forza 5 or 6, which everyone's the launch one for the Xbox One, was like, it was one of the few games, so I bought it, and I was like, I'm just going to play Forza 4 if I want to play this, because there's way more in Forza 4, mm-hmm. and the Top Gear guys are in there telling me about cars. Punch and producers. Wrong ends. <laughs> uh, apart from James May. James <laughs> May's not he wrong. Se- he seems to be wholesome. He's out, like, helping, like, with COVID Aww. relief. He's, like, driving around and helping people Aww. out. That's Where is Jeremy awesome. Clarkson? Oh, who knows? Oh, no. Yeah, not bad. <laughs> uh, anyway, any other predictions? We've got Demon Souls, I'm Gran expecting- Turismo, Horizon 2. I'm expecting like souped up versions of the games that mm-hmm. are bridging the generation gap. So like yeah. Last of Us 2, Ghost of Tsushima. Uh, what was that one that was at the game? Was it God Godfall? Mm. Yes, uh, that yeah. was con- that? Con- confirmed for PS5. Oh. We haven't heard anything about that. Mm-mm. Is that the Gearbox one? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I saw, I mean, if you're listening to the audio version, you will not be able to catch Tamor's slight eyebrow raise there. <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, All I'm saying is, no, I'm not going to say it. Don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're going to say, but don't. Tamor comes on and is just unleashing all spicy. these spicy takes. Like, Borderlands, spicy. Borderlands, all I'll say is Borderlands 3 is one of the worst written games I've ever played in my lifetime. Just saying. I- I didn't care much for it. I didn't care for the writing either. Did anyone? I know people. People do. People like it. It's just. It's just just, not for me. It's not for me, and that's fine. Yeah, and that's okay. 
That's um, how I'm living my life. It's not for me, but it's fine. It's fine. It's not right, but it's okay. But I all the ancient anyway. meme references. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, anyway, I, speaking I, of dreams will be there. Yeah, dreams will be there. Uh, dreams, yeah. dreams. And then there's like a bunch of like crossover generation mm-hmm. stuff like um, the g- games of service. Like, yeah, uh, but like uh, games as a service stuff like Siege will probably pop up in some regard. Like Fortnite's already been confirmed. Warzone. Warzone Destiny. Destiny, yep. Overwatch will probably have some sort of presence, I hope. In, I mean, I wonder yeah. if they'll bring Overwatch and just leave it or just leave it for two. That would be weird. Like, I don't know if they're going to do um, cross-gen servers. That's one thing, because like, mm. that's not been a thing for a lot of generations, right? Mm-hmm. I think maybe Microsoft did it to some degree, but like PS3 to PS4, there wasn't like backwards generational compatibility. And for Overwatch, which is putting people from both games in the same pool, I don't know if that's going to work. Mm. Yeah, I forget how Destiny 1 did it, because that was cross-generational. Yeah. I don't. I don't think you shared. It's no, like with think, 360 owners and Xbox ones. Did. did you share? Yeah. I think you just like moved your save data, didn't you? Oh, didn't you have to mm-hmm. go on PC to do it? I'm imagining that. You have to do that now. Yeah. You, mm-hmm. Once yeah. they once they opened it up for mm-hmm. like cross gen across platforms, when you had to do that. Mm-hmm. But that would mean that Overwatch would need to be on the next generation of consoles, provided that it haven't figured out some sort of cross generational server solution. Mm-hmm. I bet you with all these. All the all these like consoles and games talking to each other. I bet there's going to be a way for certain games to, like like Overwatch. I'd be surprised if you wouldn't be able to play with people on PS5 on your PS4. I don't know. Maybe not actually. I don't know. Complicated. But anyway, we should talk about Ghost of Ghost of Tsushima, not Ghosts of Tsushima. Do you know that we've uh, all been pronouncing it wrong? I didn't realize Tsushima. until last day. Tsushima. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Tsushima. Okay. I was like, I yeah. It's Shit. one of those things where it's like, if you pronounce it too correctly, you sound yeah. like an yeah. ass. So like, that's, you might as well yeah. pronounce it the Americanized way. That's precisely what I've been doing. Like, I don't want to be that yeah. person who's going, hi. Hey. It's the transition from like normal Western speaking to like one word is intensely Japanese and then back. And we're going to be talking about ghosts of Tsushima. And then Tsushima. Tsushima. I think um, I've said this on the podcast before, but I ha- my friends and I in high school, we were taking Spanish classes and we were joking about people like that. And the example was always, hi, my name is Rachel. I'm from Uruguay. So <laughs> that's how I'm always, con- I, yeah. I'm very self con I don't want to sound like that. Um, you don't want to be Rachel from Uruguay. I don't want to be Rachel from Uruguay. So yeah, I'm fine with saying Tsushima, it's fine. <laughs> That's like me whenever I go to like uh, it, to get a curry out in public. Like I'll be like speaking, and then like when I have to say the thing of you know the item I want, I switch to like Punjabi, and everyone goes, "You're a weirdo." <laughs> I'm like, it's just this is how I said it growing up. So I've made that like a point of not doing that for any other language. Uh, yeah. But that direct was cool. I am very much into that game. I you know what I really like is that the interact button is on R two. And I was Good. like, like genuinely a small thing that I noticed, interact with stuff, action button was on R2. And I was like, yes, that is ergonomically pleasing to me. You came up with a fantastic tweet during that, but you never tweeted it out. I was a coward. You were a coward. I was a coward. Um, it was it was very good. A lot of my tweets I send to Tamor for sort of like, he he's my barometer for, and, That's and he has the same Jake, for me. I'm that to Jake. Yeah, and he's like, <laughs> should I tweet this? And... I was going to tweet, broke, hold F to pay respects, woke, hold R2 to pay respects. <laughs> and I had it ready to go, and then I, go. I just waited too long. It. It's fine. It. But I liked it. Thank you. It's good. Well, one thing that I noticed that they actually called out is I liked how the wind guides you to areas. I thought yeah. that was pretty neat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, I, I had an interview with Nate Fox, um, his creative director on... Ghost of Tsushima, um, which uh, the interview is up now on GameSpot.com, final website. Where you can read it, and there will be a video version of it coming up on the YouTube channel. But we talked about a bunch of things, and um, one of the things was the wind thing. And the thing that I liked about the conversation I had was that what, the question I asked him was like, how do you avoid being Assassin's Creed 
and filling a map with icons that overwhelm people. Um, is this the wind kind of thing an attempt to do that? And he was like, yeah, kind of. Like the wind is there to guide you to your waypoint that you select and your main missions. But we've designed the game in a way that we want you to get distracted as much as possible because we've put stuff out in the world that isn't immediately visible. You know how Assassin's Creed is like every like signposting or any interesting thing it exists in the world, but it's also like oriented towards you. So you can see it in a very specific way. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's like if someone's saying something to someone, they're like mouthing it towards you to be like, hey, wouldn't it be good if someone would help us with this uh, issue we're having? They don't want to do that. They want to make it like seem like, oh, there's something happening over there. Like there's a fire stack that seems to be or like there's some commotion happening over there and you mm. go there. And if you choose to go there, there's something there. It's kind of like um, there's a little indie game that came out on PC and Xbox. Uh, Red it's Dead called, Redemption um, 2. No, it's called The Witcher That's what 3. That's I was thinking. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Witcher. Uh, but it's kind of like that. Um, uh -huh. Developed by ragtag group of people in poland um you might have heard of it uh but like that kind of thing yeah. um where you kind of it feels more natural and when you go there you have something meaningful yeah. so the wind is kind of a guide but it also the interesting thing about the wind is like they paid a lot of attention into the way they represent nature in the game um, pet fox yeah you can pet the fox uh not not the creative director no. of the game nate fox <laughs> Just a fox in the game. I mean, if you can pet Nate Fox as well, like, fair play, go for it. You might find it a bit weird. Ask but him first. Yeah, ask him first. Seek his permission. <laughs> and find his boundaries and then figure it out. But they really respect nature. In the, they want to respect nature in the game. And the reason they want to do that is because the game is influenced by, you know, s samurai cinema. And the kind of symbiosis between... The aesthetic symbiosis between, like, a wandering samurai and the desolate nature of nature mm -hmm. if you get what i'm saying like you always have the samurai standing in the field and like the grass is blowing and like the trees the leaves are like crossing over you know it's very aesthetically pleasing and they, they're making sure that they're respecting that as well so that's part of it and the other thing that i found really interesting was like there's loads of kurosawa thing like he did it he did like a broke woke galaxy brain thing as well where he was like broke everyone going this game is inspired by um uh akira kurosawa's you know uh work but actually the woke thing is it's actually inspired by a comic book series called usagi yojimbo which is like a really old it's like re it started really long time ago in the 80s and it's still ongoing but mm -hmm. it's it's um it's like a world of anthropomorphic um animals you know standing in for humans and it's about this uh rabbit ronin um who's just like uh he's a is usagi means rabbit in japanese yeah. but he's like a wandering samurai and he just rolls up into places and uses his you know his training and his wit to kind of solve the issues and moves on and that's what this game is it's like an anthology of stories um so broke is kurosawa woke is usagi ojimbo impress your friends by telling everyone actually this was well, inspired actually... by usagi ojimbo also, Galaxy um, Brain is that it's a rabbit ronin. Rabbit ronin, yeah. I wonder uh, if his uh, name is Miyamoto Miyamoto Usagi instead of Miyamoto Musashi, which is very fantastic. good. Very good. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Lone Wolf and Cub had any influence too. That'd be I fun. that's the one I didn't ask him. So I asked him if he'd seen Roroni Kenshin, mm -hmm. and he was like, "Yes, I have seen Roroni Kenshin." I was like, "If there's an Easter egg in there, I won't be petting you or Fox if you know what I'm saying." Anyway, Lone what? Wolf and Cub is another manga about <laughs> an old manga. I like how everyone felt really bummed out there. <laughs> Questions! Anyway. <Yeah. laughs> Ghosts of uh, Tsushima? <laughs> that'll do, man. All right. Uh, let's move on to listener questions then. If you've got any questions for us, you can email, uh, email us at afterdarkpodcast at gamespot.com or you can join our Discord and we will get you in there. And we've got a channel where you can ask whatever questions you'd like within reason. Uh, and this week, all the questions come from Discord once again. Uh, Callie, do you want to read the first one? Sure. I have to switch sure. tabs here. Sure. 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 I've, I've had Red Dead on the brain for the last couple of weeks. I might yeah. download it again. It's the anniversary yeah. of Red Dead 1. It is. Playing on PC was like incredible. <laughs> like it is oh, that's what I might stunning. Do. Anyway, 
This comes from CPAV on Discord. I've started getting into using Unity to jump into game design, and it's really hard coming up with an original idea beyond just doing a 2D platformer. I feel like indie developers 80% of the time just stick to side-scrolling platformers with pixel graphics just due to sheer ease, but I feel like the genre and look of these games is, are becoming a little tired. Are there any common elements of indie game design that you feel are overdone, and what games of late have blown away your expectations of what an indie, deve indie developer is capable of? By the way, love the podcast. I caved in and bought Yakuza 0 because you guys mentioned it at least once per episode, and I have to say <laughs> I'm really digging it. Yeah. We get it. We're weeaboos. <laughs> Thank Not you, me. CPAF. Uh -huh, um, Jake, Mr. I play every JRPG. Um. Anyway, <laughs> uh, the first thing that comes to mind for me is that I personally am tired of like indie Metroidvania games. I mean, I guess just Metroidvania games in general, two D ones particularly. Like Ori, as beautiful as those games look, by the time the first one came out, I was like, I've played so many indie Metroidvania games. As pretty as this game looks, and as great as it is, I just don't know if I can do that. And ever since then, I like still I, I i find it really difficult to get into 2d metroidvania games mm. i think it's just because like it's such a it, it it's like so predictable like the art style really has to draw me in and i guess if ori didn't draw me in like that it's got to be something really cool i forgot ori too i started playing ori too and i downloaded it i wanted to play it. About it since yeah i wanted to play it but it was just like i don't know if i want to do another uh, I, I don't. I don't know if I want to do Metroidvania. Even Hollow Knight is a game that I've tried to play so many times because people have told me it's one of the best games ever. Mm -hmm. Like straight up, people have told me it's the best game ever, and like I just, I can't do it because I'm just like I don't. I don't want to play a two D Metroidvania game. I struggle. I mean, uh, the difficulty is what got me with Hollow Knight, but I I feel similarly about two D Metroidvanias. Like I'm not. I don't know. I just have maybe a mental block about it because I've went through a phase of playing so many. I think the one exception to the rule is probably Dead Cells. I was going to say Dead Cells. Yeah. yeah. Well, that like shook it up quite a bit, I feel yeah. like, with the, the, the roguelite elements and stuff like that. But I, I mean, like one of my favorite games is Super Metroid. And I play that, I don't know, every other year or so. And I love that game. But and maybe that game for me just kind of hit that high. Mm -hmm. and, and just nothing has really gotten up there. But I don't know. If, I don't think that's true. Because it sounds like Hollow Knight, like from what I played, I thought the combat was great. It's just like... I just lost steam so fast and I really want to finish it. I just can't do it. Mm. Mm. The one that I think is like, annoyingly, the thing that I'm tired of uh, and the indie game that also recently I was like, this is really good, is the same thing. So like the thing I'm tired of is the Hotland Miami style thing where it's like incredibly fast paced. You mm -hmm. punch a thing once and it's dead. And then if you get killed, you, you die in one hit and then you got to start all over again. Like it worked, but there's just an abundance of them. But then the game that I really, really enjoyed recently, I forgot the name of it. What was that switch one called? Blood Roots. Blood Roots, that's the yeah. one. No, I was going to say I had a, <laughs> a, No, no, Blood Roots I really enjoyed. Like, it was that, but I think after playing that, I was like, that was good. I don't think I've enjoyed a game like that since the original Hotline Miami mm -hmm. and kind of Hotline Miami 2. I don't think Hotline Miami 2 is as good. Um, but I'm okay with not playing another one of these for a while. Um, but yeah. Yeah, that's a good one, too, because I remember being very excited for Hotline Miami 2, played through all of it, but by the time I was done with that game, I was like, I don't need another one of these games for a while. And then I played Ape Out, which I'd say is kind of close to that, which I enjoyed, oh, like but the once jazzy again. one, right? Yeah, like, the music's really good, the art style's really good, but once again, it was just kind of like, I've, do I've done this before, um, which isn't a bad thing, right? Like, I'm sure there are plenty of people who straight up missed Hotline Miami, Never played it, and then there's these other games like Blood Roots and uh, and Ape Out to kind of fill that void, so people can learn about this style. But maybe it's just because I enjoyed Hotline Miami so much, and I was like, "That's it. That's all I need." Yeah, I couldn't hmm. get into Ape Out, and and I was surprised because I love like Hotline Miami is one of like the my top indie games at the very least. I love that game, um, but yeah, it, it 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 was kind of a magic that's hard to recapture. I would say for me, the indie thing that I'm kind of tired of is uh, like Pokemon imitators and like, um, like I haven't really liked the 
3D indie, like, uh, I forget, My Time at Portia, I didn't, I wasn't super into My Time um, at Portia, which was like a 3D Harvest Moon, like, um, I think. What was the name of that Pokemon clone that was Tem-tem. really hot for a minute? I f- forgot it existed, like. <laughs> I I couldn't get into Temtem. I mean, I'm part of that it's not Temtem's fault. It's not done, so it's like I can't really say definitively whether I wouldn't get into Temtem. But I I think when you're going after rather than a genre, but a very specific kind of game, you're gonna run into issues of people who are into that kind of game comparing really closely with the game that they're used to. Um, and like as far as like farm simulators go, like Stardew Valley is probably my favorite game I've ever played. So when you try to chase that that farm game high, I just like really don't um, see anything surpassing what Stardew Valley has done. Um, and then yeah, I'm tired of Metroidvanias too. <laughs> hmm. uh, for CPAV. The trick with current indie games is like take something incredibly mundane from real life and somehow to make a cool game out of it. Like the one I always think of is like, uh, Lucy, this is specifically for Lucy. Remember Supermarket Sweep? <laughs> yeah. How has no one turned that into a video game yet? Like May. a fun mini game collection. I, uh, you want to try to check out Beep? I had an idea of like a, a, a horror game that takes place in a multiplayer lobby. Uh, or not like a like a like a multiplayer map like you're just in a multiplayer map and there's no one there and weird things start to happen and i mentioned it on the podcast i'm not saying me mentioning it had anything to do with this but i mentioned it on the podcast like an early early episode and a couple weeks later jean luc sent me a link and he's like hey isn't this what you were talking about and sure enough there's a game that was made like somewhat recently that's just a horror game where you're in like a multiplayer lobby and weird things start to happen and it's it 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 it, it was kind of neat it's called jake's spooky time with friends for some reason yeah. who knows <laughs> you guys it's actually horror? when i try to get friends to play with me but they don't join and i just run around the lobby by myself have you guys seen that horror game where you're in ikea and the lights turn off and the ikea employees chase you <laughs> that sounds awesome that sounds and really awful. cool no? That sounds amazing. You have to do you have to like build furniture to like escape them? You quick make a malm. I've only seen like a gif of it, so I would need to find it. But I really like like just indie games that take a concept and then just keep galaxy brain building on it until yeah. it, well, I mean, it, it becomes a thing. It's yeah. like Untitled so Goose that, Game, right? It's yeah. like yeah. The premise of that is like, hey, there's a mischievous goose. There was that one game which was like Floor is Lava. Do you remember that? And it oh, was the one that was on Apple Arcade? Yeah. Yeah. So, did you ever play this game? Like, it's gonna. This is gonna sound real weird, but I don't know you if it's regional. You brought up supermarket sweep, so. No, sticky, sticky glue. Did you ever play this game? So there's this kid, <laughs> a playground game we used to play called sticky, sticky glue, um, and what it was like basically like tag or had. Um, so had. one person. What's had? Like, yeah. Some people called had tag in in like depending. On, I I moved around a lot of schools, very unstable, infancy, um, and <laughs> it was different different like things. Uh, uh, different names for the games. And one of them was yeah. Tag, one of them was Tag. But it was Tag, one person was it, and then everyone ran, and this person chased them. And when they got tagged, instead of being out, they would have to, like, put their hands out. So they were, like, told that they were caught in glue, in sticky glue. And then what would happen is another player could then, if they could, like, run underneath that person's arm, it would put them back in the game. So the we person... did play this! Yeah. So, yes. We didn't call it that, were, though. So the person oh, yeah. who I yeah. played freeze tag, freeze, yeah, freeze, maybe, that's just freeze tag. Listen, it's called sticky sticky glue. So make the indie game sticky sticky glue, CPAV. Um, <laughs> but like, I'd love to see like a Rocket League style treatment to that. You know what I'm saying? Like just an arena where you have to like run around and tag people and sticky sticky unstick glue them. All right, Is before that we the move episode on to the title, next, sticky sticky glue. Sticky, sticky glue. Yeah, I'd say so, uh, before we move on to the next question. Uh, are there any, just quickly, are there any indie games recently that really blew you away? Disco Elysium. Disco, 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 yeah. disco. Disco. Yeah. Disco. Yeah. I'd say Disco and Blood Cells. Blood Cells is what, a couple years old now, but Blood Cells. Dead Cells. <laughs> dead Cells. Blood, cell, blood Roots and Dead Cells. Blood Roots, Dead Cell, and <laughs> Disco Elysium. Mind. Yeah. Watch the episode um, of Audio Logs about Disco Elysium. It's there's probably that, my favorite uh, one. Hold on. There's that one Apple Arcade like game cells. that I was obs- obsessed with. What was it oh, called? Oh, is it the. 
Oh, Grindstone. Grindstone. Yeah, Grindstone's great. Absolute the banger of the game. Yeah, what yeah. the golf. What the golf. Great. Yeah. Yeah. What the golf. Um, um, uh, Patent is still my favorite Apple Arcade game. It's just basically mm-hmm. doing jigsaw puzzles. It's <laughs> the life I lead. I was doing jigsaw puzzles before it was cool. <laughs> Bring back Peggle. Oh, don't. Yeah. Next question is from Myron WB. Since they seem everywhere, what are your favorite examples of skill trees in games? I think this is a follow-up to last week uh, mm. when one of the questions was, what do you want to see not return next gen? And Jean-Luc was like, I'm tired of skill trees skill in trees. every game. Uh, what was Sadly for Jean-Luc, trees? also Shishima has two skill trees. So, uh, I mean, I was going to say, I really like the Witcher skill tree. It's not like the Witcher 3s. It's not like you can't like craft a entirely different character with that skill tree but it's really fun matching the colors and plugging in yeah. different cells in order to like improve your strength or alchemy mm-hmm. or whatever it might be like it's really satisfying i think it's just seeing how all that stuff connects yeah. um uh, but yeah, I, liked, I, don't know. Um, I liked horizon zero dawn skill tree but i i like couldn't tell you why i just remember liking it yeah. I like skill trees in general, though. I'm all about I like, specking. I love yeah. specking yeah. shit. So. Sekiro's just, skill tree is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Sekiro's um, is good. Uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake skill tree. Not skill tree, but like... Oh, Materia. The, the mater- not, ma- not the, the Materia, weapon. The, the weapon upgrade thing. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty good AP point. And Final Fantasy X Sphere Grid is really good as well. I like that. The I like the way they change skill trees if you look across the Mass Effect series, and I like the way in 3, it was very, very simple, but then at one point it just allowed you to branch, and so it was basically like, just a nice way of introducing things, but I mm. think, what, I, what was the skill tree? Was it um, Far Cry Primal? I remember liking their skill tree a lot, because I think of the way that you unlock stuff was basically based on what you collected or how many people you killed. I prefer things like that, I prefer... <gasps> Like in yeah. Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein. I was just saying, Wolfenstein yeah. is really good because it's based on what you do. Yeah, I really enjoy it when skills upgrade that way. And because it can, some, if I want to unlock everything, it forces me to play in a play mm-hmm. style that I usually wouldn't, which I think is great. But it also enforces my... It, it's great it, enforcing the way that I like to play, but also encouraging me to mm-hmm. try play styles I don't normally do. So I oh, think Wolfenstein is good. Well, that was one of the great things about Skyrim too. Its skill yeah. tree yes. was just... It, it it like adapted to you as opposed to you build a skill tree or a character at store and you follow that skill tree. It was more yeah. like, okay, I want to do this play style and then everything would be tailored to you as you followed that path, yeah. which is neat and it's great. And I and I liked how that system was you'd look up at the stars and you'd see the Yeah. And, and you'd like plot your path in the stars. I thought that was that that was a really neat skill tree. Dishonored is pretty good as well. Yeah. Yeah. Dishonored is just great though, isn't it? Yeah, it's straight up banger of a game. Both of them. All right, Tamor, do you want to read this last question here? Oh boy, do I. <laughs> um, <laughs> we all come into front software. That sounded that was a very boring start to the reading there. <laughs> we all come into from software games and roguelikes expecting some kind of challenge. But what games over the years have you encountered that completely caught you off guard with how hard they were? Personally, I would say Jack 2 and Metal Arms. On the outside, they look like simple, family-friendly adventures. But on the inside, they're some of the most unforgiving, difficult games of the PS2 era. Jeremy from Discord. He's in Discord. He's not born and living in Discord. I was born in the <laughs> Discord. I was born in Discord. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I like how you put your hand over your mouth. Yeah, it sounded the same. <laughs> but your voice sounded exactly the same. Because you need to get the echo. There is. That's the more. fire rises. Pizza? Uh, difficult uh, games that look easy on the outside. Jack 2 is a good is a, is a good one here because I remember having so much trouble with that game as a kid. Like, I'd have to have friends help me beat certain areas because it was so freaking hard. I don't know if it's still hard, but I remember having so much trouble with that game. Um, I wouldn't say it's like the game in general, but Jesus Christ, Sephiroth in <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Wait, he's in Kingdom Hearts 2? Dude, he's played he by Lance my... Bass from NSYNC. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. Oh, hell okay. yeah. Uh, it's like, the game is 
from my recollection and playing it as a kid, fairly even in terms of uh, difficulty. And then you get to Sephiroth. I think he's an optional boss anyway, but you yeah. <laughs> get to Sephiroth and it's like, oh, shit. Yeah, this yeah. is not going to go the way I want. They were like, we need to preserve his like legacy, so make him basically unbeatable. Yeah. Um, and then you've got like little cartoon characters trying to fight this evil <laughs> superhero, and Goofy's just getting absolutely stomped by a dude with a <laughs> massive sword constantly. And you're like, what's this about? Why have you done this? Um, another one that I can think of is. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with Mario 64 as a kid. I thought that game would be easy because it's a Mario game. Mm. But I remember, especially when you get to the late, the later areas, because early on, like a lot of the levels make sense, right? Like you're on, you're on a mountain, you're on a an icy area, and then I feel like you get to the later levels, and it's just like, all right, we're just gonna like vomit a bunch of floating platforms, and you have to jump from floating platform to floating platform in order to get this like star that's a pain in the ass to get while you're trying to figure out the camera and and it, like that game i remember being very hard i remember not having that much difficulty with crash bandicoot one through three as a kid but the remake hmm. was way harder and i was like oh this is not how i remember my childhood yeah. i had that with final fantasy 9 i remember like playing final fantasy 9 so many times and then i brought it on psp i was so excited and i started playing it. i was like how did i play this it's impossible it's like on I was trying to get to like the first dungeon in the, or just out of the first area. I was like, I'm getting stomped. What's happening? There was an article oh. going around the other day where it was like, how did anyone beat the Lion King as a kid? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. They've gone back to it and it's just nails. Mary can like speed run that thing. And I'm like, I remember Damn. completing it once. It took about half my lifetime. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's been episode 42 of GameSpot After Dark. Thank you so much for tuning in. And if you have any questions, feel free to email us. Email us. I can never do that. Email at us. Email have you us. seen... Do you even know that Britney Spears had a song called Email My Heart? <laughs> and there's an incredible video of her talking about email. And it's like her in the late 90s going, well, everyone's on email these days. And so... <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I'm just so saying Britney. email my heart should be the way that we approach emails from now on. All right. Well, email our hearts at afterdarkpodcast at gamespot.com. Uh, or if you just want to join the Discord, you can message us on Twitter or you can email us and we'll add you to the Discord server, which we have a whole channel for questions and then plus a bunch of other stuff uh, movies, comics, wrestling, TV shows, games, of course. Uh, but please join the Discord. It's great. Uh, anyway, Callie, where can people find you? And are you working on anything this week? You can find me on Twitter at Inky Dojiko, I N K Y D O J I K K O. And, um, you know, just the usual. What about your, your flower guide? The flower guide is really coming together. John Luke has almost finished the graphics for that to help visualize some of the more difficult ones. Um, and I'm really, I really am proud of the flower guide. Um, of course, credit for the information for a lot of the information goes to um the data miners uh Pauly's, um advanced flower genetics guide was a big source and then i consulted a lot i've tested a lot um but i think uh what we've put together is really good so there you go so if you're curious about what kind of flowers you can get or what kind of flowers you want you can check that out uh lucy where can people find you and In is Animal there anything Crossing. coming up I, don't know if I think people we'll figure that out. <laughs> no, you're just really into botany these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Send Kelly your <laughs> botany real life spot. flower requests. Uh, I'm at Lucy James Games on Twitter and Instagram. What am I working on? I'm working on some episodes of audio logs that we're doing that I can't talk about, um, but you should hopefully see one of those very soon. Um, and we have Play for All coming up, which is starts on June 1st, so it's kind of half our e3 replacement covering all the big game announcements previews etc everything you'd come to expect from us at e3 and then the other half that i'm more involved in is the charity stream so myself tomorrow and chastity have been booking guests in we're gonna have friends of GameSpot, so like people from the industry um we can do some names like troy baker greg miller uh, apex legends voiceovers assassin's creed um i'm trying to think like voice who actors. said yeah voice actors what did i say Voiceovers. 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 
The actors Close will enough. be there too. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've got like lots of people. The schedule for that should be coming out soon, actually. Um, we've got but, we've got Jesus. Yeah, mm-hmm. Tam is so excited. I'm so I'm excited. Really excited. I'm excited too. <laughs> Jesus Hits Toast is the best and most enjoyable Bloodborne speedrunner in the world. And I like gingerly went to him and I was like, please, sir, will you stream for us? And he <laughs> was like, oh, more. hell yeah. He was like, yeah, let's do this. And like, he's the nicest guy. If you watch any of his like a uh, awesome games done quick stuff, like you will see why he's so good. He like turns his speed runs into their own narrative and They're like tells really the story. Good. It's so yeah. good. And I'm, my like, favorite, so... my favorite bit is his bit about ladders. Yeah. yeah it's going to bring that up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not super into speed running. Uh, like, Games done quick never really interests me, but whenever he's on, I yeah. typically tune in for that because I think he's very entertaining and he's really good at it. Just watching yeah. him yeah. describe as you go. Like, I mean, streaming Bloodborne recently is difficult because talking while playing that game is hard because <laughs> yeah. you're just so focused. But he is like genuinely funny and entertaining, and I'm very excited for that. Yeah. Uh, speaking yeah. of which, though, tomorrow, what are you working on and where can people find you? And it looks like you're frozen. You look angry, though. Well, I'm not frozen. Oh, you froze. Well, you were frozen. I thought you were just being really still, but <laughs> yeah. it caught you in a moment where it was like you were angry. I got... No, his, his... Oh, he did it again. Or he's well, doing I don't know it. because no, I'm he's got Persona on in the background. I'm trying to see if that's moving. <laughs> it's not moving. I'm gonna uh, you can find me on Twitter. So I can show him how angry yeah, he looks. Good idea. Well, Is you... it still oh, frozen? No. Oh, you missed it. Damn. Wait, hang on. This is going to be such a weird podcast for those yeah, who listen po- to it. I'm this sorry. podcast could really just be called just, technical Just call it technical and if it to oh my. He's doing it again. Uh, well, you can find Tamor at Tamor H on Twitter. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping he can come back in to tell us what he's working on. But Definitely I imagine it's a lot his, uh, of the... Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to say check out his uh, Ghost of uh, Tsushima. Tsushima. Tsushima interview mm-hmm. um so and he's helping pull together all the games and charity guests for play for all schedule coming soon be excited and also he's probably Sorry, gonna go viral on, he's gonna go viral on twitter at some point <laughs> again he, does. he always does uh you can find me at jacob deck on twitter uh and i have a witcher video that went up celebrating five years of that game oh he's, he's gone. gone uh We're celebrating there. Oh, there he is, celebrating five years of that game. And uh, there's something What's else. What's going on here? Oh, yeah, a review. I'm cool. doing a review, which should be coming next week. I hate Discord. <laughs> Join our Discord. Anyway, we'll see you next week. Join our Discord. We plugged all your stuff for you. Thank you very much. Thank you.